So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Lutz. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Daniela. <laughs> And uh, I've been in touch with Aplico and with the guys already for a while, also before I joined LAP. A couple of years ago, uh, I was working with uh, the star-shaped uh, car company from Stuttgart uh, throughout Asia. Then I was always thinking, hey, if we could get a fully integrated model, that would really be cool because that would save us a ton to model ourselves, everything. So we're always in touch. And then when the guys asked me a couple of weeks ago if I could present the case study here and do a little bit of marketing for them, I'm not paid actually today, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm here voluntarily and uh, it's actually a true story. I thought, okay, but M&A, now I'm with a private equity. We had some private equity guys here. Our company is privately held. I know all of them, yeah? so it's a very, very private equity entity, but then we're not entirely active in the M&A market, although I've seen today that we should probably be investing and divesting more. I was wondering why an M&A topic, yeah? and I said, okay, yeah, we've been using this initially for the FP&A side, and then when I went through and, and uh, thought about it, I said, yeah, it makes sense because we've heard it a couple of times today, transparency, 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 Keep your eyes, uh, how do you steer, how do you understand your business, what are the value drivers. I thought, okay, this is exactly what we were discussing. Maybe not primarily because we wanted to do a ton of M&A transactions. And then we went, when we went through and said, okay, what uh, could I present? We said, okay, there's a ton of things which we actually, also in the realm of M&A, use the tool for. Yeah? And jump to two concluding slides, pretty much. Um, and bringing it back to what also Daniele presented, what are the challenges and the topics regarding M&A, and we said increased transparency, and I think I've heard transparency in all presentations pretty much, um, and what goes very well for the internal steering, of course also goes very well uh, into analyzing a potential target, or if we were up to sale, which we're not, <laughs> never, that's what I heard, yeah. uh, the fourth generation is already alive, uh, and I know them. <laughs> like um, so, but on, this, on, the, on the buy side, of course, it's easier if you have the transparency by yourself. And again, we buy stuff that we know. So it's not a company that's completely outside of our business line, but be close. But then, of course, we can apply the logic that we have internally also to this one, and that helps. Um, um, and we heard about multiples a couple of times. Um, I like to do discounted cash flow as much as possible. It's not always the easiest to transport, uh, but with a solid model and with a solid driver-based forecasting model behind it, which doesn't have to be rocket science to the last digit, you can also do a very solid DCF calculation and budget and forecast your working capital, sound and safe, uh, and not overstate or uh, understate it. And that is a big, big chunk which the solution brings, uh, not only for internal steering, but also for M&A transactions. Second, what we discussed is communication. I think that's, that's obvious, right? So if you have everything ready, um, you can present this in a more professional way. Daniela mentioned there's also UX, so also front end that, that does the trick very, very neatly and very, very, very nice. Um, and of course, if we were selling, I would be very, very happy to have a fantastic pitch deck of everything ready. But then again, I would never get that chance in this company. Um, gives me some ideas maybe for the next. Um, and in general, the communication aspect is key. So that helps really quite a lot. Due diligence is the same thing. And we've been using this also for uh, target evaluation. Because if we have a model, we can even if the numbers are faxed to us, we can get them into the model and uh, try to do an analysis based on this because it's a pre-built model and it's a holistic model. So we don't have to build up something in Excel and try to get it together and say, oh shit, did I forget something? Um, no, that works quite nice. And that helps in the due diligence and also in an assessment of a sales price of where we stand. Not so much to, uh, uh, to analyze financial risks and the likes, but also here you see if things are out of line compared to what you expect and what you experience in your daily business. So that is a big help here. Uh, performance. Um, for us, it's basically, I'll start from the back pretty much. <laughs> uh, 
Um, because a big advantage from our side is also integration planning and execution. Oops, no, go back. So, um, detailed integration uh, and forecasting. So the big advantage is I don't have to get a ton of IT guys to integrate a new entity into what we have. It will not be the full blown thing, including all customer segments and all products in detail and everything. But into that model, it's fairly easy to integrate an entity um, and then also start to in include it into your performance tracking. Uh, not like with an entity that you've been having in the group for 20 years, but uh, the integration is seamless compared to uh, a lot of other tools that I've seen. Uh, and to bring in a standard SAP, implement this, and then have it uh, part of a standard tool chain, and then integrate, and then you can automatically consolidate, you have everything, normally it takes longer than two weeks. Uh, and uh, with this one, that's really helpful also in the integration, so whenever we get a new entity, it's fairly easy to bring them into our management reporting, uh, and bring them into also our steer steering logic. Um, and the other th topics was performance management, uh, improved performance. Again, with transparency, it's easier to do. Uh, and also in the transaction, it helped us a lot. And we've been also using this to track. Uh, so the business case we've received originally before the transaction is something that we throw in. And then we can track against this one. That's something not everybody likes all the time. Um, but I like that. Um, and this is, in a nutshell, to bring it back to also why I personally think, number one, it's a great tool. Number two, it's not a massive effort to implement. Um, and number three, besides the internal FP&A topics, it also helps in M&A topics. Yeah? Um, and with that one, Daniela, you come back. You have to answer the questions now. <laughs> <laughs> so, <thanks. laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>